is a golden piece of 20th century cinematography, winning multiple Golden Globes and Oscars for its actors and screenplay. What inspired this piece of pivotal American film? Mario Puzo's book by the same name for one. But the dark interiors and masculine poses of Al Pacino, Marlon Brando, and Robert Duvall come from another place, far from the gangsters of New York. The Godfather was filmed a short distance away from one of the biggest collections of Caravaggio art in Italy. This video will explore the impact of Caravaggio on The Godfather. Dark interiors of groups of men, prevalent shadows, and major colors of black, white, yellow, and red create a fascinating visual experience in Francis Ford Coppola's 1972 film The Godfather. The Godfather's cinematographer, Gordon Willis, was influenced by Baroque Italian master painter Caravaggio for the film. The placement of characters in interiors with specific light angles and body positions in The Godfather is uncannily similar to three of Caravaggio's paintings, The Incredulity of St. Thomas, Summer, Supper at a Mouse, and Cardinal Mafio Barberini. Michelangelo Caravaggio painted religious and daily Italian life between 1595 to 1610. His dramatic use of lighting was renowned across Italy, and he painted at least 60 accredited paintings in his relatively short career. Caravaggio used black, white, and red to astounding effect. He also became famous for using well-known prostitutes in his religious scenes, most notably using well-known Roman prostitute Lena in his Madonna di Loretto. Despite being a murderer, killing a young man over potential gambling debts or a lost tennis match in 1606, Caravaggio was hired to paint family chapels and churches such as the Contarelli Chapel across southern Italy. However, his life of crime caught up with him and he was found dead on a beach in Malta or Tuscany at age 38. His grave was never marked. The two paintings in this video, Supper at a Mouse and The Incredulity of St. Thomas, are in museums in London and Potsdam, respectively. The third, The Cardinal Mafio Barberini, is held in a private collection in Florence. What Gillis reproduces from Caravaggio's works is the lighting, color tone, and the position of characters. In The Incredulity of St. Thomas, Jesus slash Don Corleone is at the right of the frame with light falling on their upper bodies from above. A doubter, the caretaker in The Godfather, who doubts Don Corleone's abilities to get justice for his assaulted daughter, and the doubter in the painting, is on the left of the frame, inclined towards the main character, Jesus slash Don Corleone. The light from above highlights the doubter's forehead. The doubter is bent with an extended arm, shoulder visible to the left of the frame. The doubter's collar is visible in both images. The middle finger is highlighted and looks downward in both images. A red color appears in the high left of both Caravaggio and the film scene. The characters in both scenes wear a mix of black and white clothing, with Jesus slash Don Corleone wearing the most white out of all figures. Don Corleone's suit, is, suit front is open, like Jesus' white bared chest. A clutched hand appears in the middle of both images creating tension in the scene. With color, lighting, and figure position, there is substantial similarity between the two works. What Gillis captured was a black world that had not existed before, certainly not in Florence or Rome. Caravaggio's work has a terrible naturalism, astonishing deceptions which attract and ravish human sight. Caravaggio painted all his figures with a single source of light, usually by making holes in his ceiling, and on one plane without any diminution, but such accusations did not stop the flight of his fame. He took to using a single strong source of light that illuminates his figures against darkness, like a theatrical spotlight, and we can see the same effect happening with Gillis's work here. In this still, from The Godfather, eldest son and heir to the Godfather position, Santino, has light falling on his front and is wearing a golden crucifix with his left hand raised. In The Supper at a Mouse, Jesus raises his left hand while, in, while there's light from above. Both Santino and Jesus are wearing white. A dark shadow appears behind both. In the film still, bald Clemenza is positioned higher than Santino and is looking to the right. 
In the painting, Jesus' companion is higher than he is and is also looking to the right, wearing a skull cap that gives the appearance of baldness. Tessio in the film has his back to the camera. His leftmost silhouette is discernible from the darkness. Same with the leftmost figure in the Caravaggio painting. Both figures have dark hair, visible shoulders, and arms and light falling on them from above. On the right is Tom Hagen, whose nose and forehead are prominent in his side gaze. Same with the rightmost figure in the painting. All of the figures are gathered around a table, apparent from the coffee cup in the Godfather still. We see Willis's work transforming Caravaggio's work with an entirely different medium, changing the character of the use while adding original effects like exposure, filters, and developing techniques. Willis literally transformed a painting's components into film. In the next set of images, there is Michael Corleone as Don and 16th century Cardinal Maffio Barberini at age 30. Both men are dressed in black with white collars, white sleeves, and white hands. Both men rest their hands at the end of the arms of a chair. Both men have their left forefingers raised. Both men are alone and seated, and the images are both vertical. Both men are positioned forward, eyes towards the viewer. Both men have light falling on them at an angle with one eye darkened. Both men's legs extend into darkness. The cinematographer Willis admitted his Carfaggio influence to colleagues. Gordon Willis's cinematography on Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather and The Godfather Part II earned him his nickname The Prince of Darkness, but never was darkness used to greater metaphorical effect. Corruption and redemption were rendered in tonalities Carfaggio might have envied. Like so many of the finest cinematographers, Willis was highly influenced by the great painters. There's also a recollection where someone said, I met some very talented cinematographers who were working on television commercials in between films, such as Gordon Willis, who had been the director of photography on Francis Ford Coppola's Godfather films. He was interested in Baroque painting and tried to emulate the palette and the feel of Rembrandt and Carvaggio. And this was reported in Metal Magazine in 2016 by Patricia Ramos. The Godfather uh, 2 was filmed partially in Savoca, Sicily, which is a 40-minute drive from the Museum Galleria d'Arte Contemporanea de Messina, which houses Caravaggio works. It would have been a very accurate or fun thing for the film crew to do to go visit this museum and look at the Caravaggio paintings. Maybe they wanted to visit the paintings and that's why they partially chose Savoca, Sicily. I'm not sure, but it's clear that we see Carvaggio's influence in the Godfather scenes shot by Gordon Willis.